so hello everybody and uh, welcome back I just put down my visor so you can hear me I suppose <coughs> you're all saying well what happened to you well to tell you the truth I just changed my job and I've been so busy getting myself into a routine for my new job which is uh, basically nine to five every single uh, every single day Monday to Friday instead of the night shifts and so on which I won't have any more but I have a bit of news for you folks the BMW R 1250 GS Adventure is gone and what have I bought many of you might have guessed already but, uh, how are you doing mate? Or uh, maybe you were able to see the uh, speedometer and take it from there. Yes, I bought a new bike. I tried it in the, BS, uh, the GS Adventure and I got this. I've had it for about two weeks now and uh, I've not been able to get out on it because of the bad weather. We've had rotten weather. Can I take him? Ah, oh, come on. That was a bit sketchy but I made it. Yeah, I am... Uh, I'm on my new bike and I'll tell you straight away what it is. It's a BMW R9T 719 edition, which just has the luscious paint on it and all the 719 jewelry bits and pieces, which are delicious as well. It's on Michelin Road 5s, which I have never had before and uh, I'm sort of getting used to the bike the bike with a lot of character there's that beautiful little shake left and right that you get when you start this bike I'm trying to get used to the riding position on it my legs are a little bit cramped up and I have absolutely no wind protection whatsoever. I've just come off the motorway and I was uh, sort of cruising between 120 kilometers an hour and 140. And I found 140 very blustery. So I'm going to be looking at some sort of a uh, not screen, but there are these aluminium sort of panels that you can put at the front of it to take a bit of the pressure off your chest at least and uh, we'll see how that goes I think the nicest one is probably the original BMW uh, windbreaker I won't call it a screen and uh, I've seen Wunderlich do uh, sort of plastic or poly whatever they're called but I I don't think I'd I'll go for that I'm just gonna go for the pure aluminium look and it comes to about here on the clocks so it might help out a little bit with the air pressure on my chest because anything above 140 you feel like you have to hang on for dear life I'm heading at the moment towards the Odenwald and uh, into sort of the Rhine wine area which is very nice it is Saturday so I was expecting traffic but this bike is equipped with a 1170 cc 110 brake horsepower or 119 is it? No, it's 110 brake horsepower engine 
and I think there's 119 newton meters of torque. Of course it has the boxer twin, which I actually like an awful lot. I find this one here, which is the air oil cooled version, very characterful. Plenty of torque, more than you'd ever need. It actually rips the arms out of you if you give it the welly, as we say in Ireland. And uh, I feel the bike is very agile at the front. I haven't been able to test out what the cornering grip is like. The suspension is quite hard. The seat is also quite hard and the riding position is slightly leaned forward with your bike, your, your legs up in a sort of a, I wouldn't say sports bike position, but very close to it. So it's definitely not a bike that you're going to be taking out on long tours. But as I have two other bikes with fairings and wind protection, I don't think I'll have a problem with that at all. But for the ride out to the Odenfalls like I'm doing now, happy days. I test drove the Triumph Speed Twin. What, Lynx? I'm going up here, am I? I am. And I then went back to BMW and bought this here. Roads are a bit damp because it's been raining for days. So, fairly new tyres and a bike that I don't know that well yet. So I'm going to be taking it fairly mellow. Just getting used to the bike to start off with. And let it grow on me a bit before I start ripping it which I will probably be doing now myself. Uh, you can see there's a lot of sort of dampy patches at the moment and I've actually never had these tires before so I don't know what they're like. I believe they're very very good. I don't like the profile on them I think it's a bit sort of funny with all those little holes in it. Uh, but if they're a good tyre, they're a good tyre. I will be changing, changing them and I've already made my choice for the Bridgestones S23s, the new ones. They are a little bit sportier and they are a bit gooier. And you can even use them on a track day instead of just a road sport tire so what are we supposed to be doing 30 here is it so it's a beautiful day the sun is actually out at the moment i can feel a little bit of warmth on my back at the moment because i have the sun behind me and i will get off the bike now in a few minutes do a run around on it with my 360 camera and let you have a good look at it. So she's equipped with Brembo's at the front, BMW badged Brembo's at the back, and it, this bike actually has the adjustable front forks, which is preload and rebound, and the front forks come directly from the 1000 double R. So they're the nice goldy looking ones. A bit of gold is always a bit is always nice to have. They had the gold wheels on my GS Adventure. My wife didn't like them. I thought they were lovely. A little bit of bling bling somewhere on the bike is quite nice. Other than that, I do not like any sort of anodized parts. I really hate them. They look like made in China. Right, well to this bike, very basics. Um, I believe we do have Cornering ABS, ABS, traction control, cornering traction control and a few other delicious little things but 
the controls are very basic it doesn't have that roundy whizzy wheel there but uh, you don't need it and it doesn't even show you how much fuel you have left in the tank so what's going on here is are you gonna have a barbecue on the road or what bicycles oh Jesus oh well say no more but um, in all the bike is uh, very nimble and light to drive very easy to drive although I am getting used to the leaning forward position or lent forward position and uh, I have to turn up now in 250 meters that's up here to the left so let me concentrate I was sad to see the GS Adventure go because I mean what a fantastic bike and to tell you the truth, if I had the choice over that and the R1300 GS Adventure, yes sir, I would go for the 1250. Not just because I think it looks nicer, but because of the engine. The sound and characteristics of the R1250 just suited me and I have ridden the R1300 and it may as well be a sports bike which didn't suit me because I think if you're doing touring on a bike like that you don't need the bike to egg you on all the time. The 1250 is an absolutely beautiful bike to cruise the corners and rip if you want to. It certainly moved and did it need another couple of brake horsepower? Not at all. It was powerful enough. It ripped the arms out of you. I ripped the, the arms out of your socket, sockets. So I was happy, happy, happy with the R1250 GSA, but I felt I needed a bit of a change. And I woke up one morning and said to myself, let's get something else. So I traded it in. Uh, I didn't get a fantastic price. I traded it in with BMW because I saw this, fell in love with this, and said, give it to me. So I hope I'm going to be able to get rid of these cars fairly soon. And just test out what this bike, bike is really made of. I'm going to go up here. Let's go up here. Right, well i tell you what, we may as well have a little look at the bike. I'll turn her off and let you have a little look around. So I've taken off the bump stop. There was a lovely in colour matching bump stop at the back here and that's the way I bought her. I have put my quad lock on for my navigation as you can see on my telephone there. And as you can see, it has the Road 5 Michelin's on it there. There's also, if you can look in there, an adjustable rear shock for preload. And I think at the back of that, there's rebound as well. The bike was fitted out with absolutely every 719 part that you can buy. Even the rear pegs here are the 719. The rear sets are gear changer, heads on it are 719, let's get up here, brake reservoir, sorry brake reservoir, clutch reservoir, I'm going to turn her off, and even up the front of the engine it's 719 option there, Brembo brake brakes on I think 320 floating discs, 
The only part of this bike that is plastic are the back of these here. Everything else is aluminium and beautifully, beautifully made. I like the front light. It's all LED. The indicator is LED. I also have the 719 front brake lever, which is five-way adjustable. Very nice here. BMW in the middle of it. Even the 719 uh, wing dingers there, which are nice. And there you have her. I hope you like it. I'm enjoying it. Uh, I think it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful looking bike. And I am happy with the way she looks. And I'm happy with the way she rides. Oh, I did get one wonderly part during the week. And they are these risers here. Just giving me two centimeters of lift. Bringing my arms up a little bit. Uh, so that I don't have to lean forward as much and I must say it is day and night Just that two centimeters Rise in the handlebars has made a huge difference and I'm delighted with that I'm not going to put a tail tidy on it. I don't think it needs it. People say tail tidy tail tidy. Well, I don't think so. So uh, It's a beautiful beautiful bike and I'm not going to do it. I'd like to get some sort of a tank rucksack on it and uh, if I can do that I will fit one as soon as I possibly can. So there's the front of the bike there now. If you like a boxer engine you're going to be delighted with this bike. This bike has plenty of pull, plenty of grunt, low down grunt. It'll pull in any gear and uh, it'll rev out to around about eight and a half sorry yeah eight and a half thousand revs um, it's not like the triumph speed twin which sort of pulls and loses all puff that's where you notice the difference between 110 brake horsepower and 100 uh, brake horsepower or just under which the speed twin is so let's get onto the bike again i'll start up the clocks for you give you a look at that nice little bit of synchronizing there and there's the beautiful little shake left and right that you get when you start this bike so let's go and ride this a little bit more now that the traffic has passed and i've dirtied up my tires in the mess here but let's get out of here before anyone else decides to come in our same direction on this beautiful road so sound uh yes boxer boxery sound but i do like it i must say i hope you can hear me now and i hope the wind noise isn't too bad because i have my visor open here now and uh please don't be expecting me to rip on these two tires here oh, really does pull well back brake is might be running in issue the 200 kilometers some people do not use the back brake at all the front brake is really really strong and uh, it's a uh, definitely just a one finger job there's not an awful lot of fork dive, not that I've noticed, uh, it dives initially and stays there, which is fabulous. I am rooted by Kalimoto, which is fabulous I feel, but yes that's a little bit of lean angle there, on cold new tyres so that's not too bad. And as you can see, Kalimoto has always done a beautiful job of sending me where the twisties are. This is definitely a bike that you will enjoy in the summertime and probably a little bit less in the winter time. But as it's brand new, I decided to take it out today 
its initial drive. So I've only spent about a half an hour on it and I'm really getting warm with it. I must say I love those front brakes, I really do. I have my winter gloves on me which are fairly new as well and I don't like them at all because I'm not getting any feel through the gloves. I don't like gloves which take the feel away from me from riding a motorcycle. I'd nearly prefer to have cold hands but as you have heated grips and you have cruise control on this bike which is amazing for an O9T. Wow, there was a hole. Yes, the suspension is hard, but it's not rock hard. It's not sports bike hard in a in a hard position. But uh, turn right, it said here. Sorry for the snorting. Everybody has a cold in the company, and I might have got a little bit of that to take away with me on the weekend. Absolute river running through. Well, I must say, she definitely has a bit of go in her, and she is agile to lean into any bend, really, that you give it. We're in a 30 again, so let's just do that. Wasn't this very cute here? You might even think you were in the south of Germany in Bayern looking at the properties here. Gasthaus Goldener Hirsch or Kirsch? Hirsch. So that was neutral I put it into. Yes, I do have one or two little issues that I might have to live with. One, the first one is there's a funny sound and it sounds like as if you would have a very very loud tinnitus problem coming from the direction of the tank which indicates to me that I could have an issue with the petrol pump. Now when I bought the bike I initially didn't hear it but when I was actually driving it away, I said to the salesman, Daniel, that I noticed this funny noise, and he said, yeah, that's very annoying. I said, well, is it going to stay? He said, well, you'll have to just fill it up and see if, the, uh, if it's different when the tank is full, because you're not getting a full tank of petrol. So he sent me off. I went straight to the first fill-up station that I could see and or that I'd passed and I filled her up and I thought well if the bit of luck now that sound is gone. No, it was identical. So a day or two later I went back to see Danny and I said listen that is really really annoying. Plenty of overtaken drunk Excuse me, people. And he said, well, I tell you what, you're going to get a service done on it in December. Would you uh, let me know in December and I reckon a service update or a software update might cure the issue. So believing that, I went off happily with my new bike and the first thing I noticed was, oh, it really is annoying me. That noise just doesn't go away. You don't hear it when you're driving like this, and I have earplugs in as well, so it's not too bad. But am I going too fast? Yes, so it's a 50 here. And uh, If you're standing at the traffic lights and listening to your engine, you will hear it immediately. Which isn't very nice, is it? So, we're turning up to the right here. Wherever this might be. 
don't know where I am at all. I'm in the Odenwald somewhere. Oh God, aren't they nice, those houses up there? Very nice. That's a nice little... Oh, that's a cemetery. Oh, I thought it was a park. But, uh... There are nice corners of the world here in Germany. In the Odenwald, it really is. I must say. And Kalimoto is always prepared to show you the nicest areas to drive. So anyway, folks, you're updated now, and, uh, hello, mate. And, uh, I hope you like my video. If it, if you do, if you have enjoyed the short video today, just give me a like. I haven't put up a video for quite a while now, so, uh, I think my channel might be stagnating a little bit, and this would help me quite a lot of you would give me a thumbs up and if you like the video well then do subscribe I'll be doing quite a bit more on the R9T now this is only the initial video to let you know that I have sold the GS and I have bought myself a R9T and I have plans to buy another bike in the summertime what might that be could it be a Ducati? Could it be a KTM? Could it be another BMW? Might it be a Honda? Have I taken to Yamaha's? Well, let this be another surprise. Oh, let's get rid of this bloke here. My God, this thing bloody flies, this bike. A little twist of the throttle and it rockets away. And that's very enjoyable anyway listen thanks for being with me don't forget like and subscribe how you doing mate and uh, we'll see you soon on the next one bye bye